Hey guys, today I'm back to film my second Tarte Get Ready With Me. Um, I know some of you guys requested I do tutorials with the Tarte holiday sets, and I believe I'm on the 2014 set. It's been kind of a while since I did the last one, but this is the quad that we are using today. So it's three matte shadows and one shimmer. You can obviously tell which one is the shimmer because it's the only one that's got a little bit of a sheen to it. But this is one of my favorite quads, actually, just because it is all matte, and it goes really well with the rest of the set. It kind of gives me some nice blending and transition colors and stuff. But, I don't know, I just, the shadows in this quad are actually really good, in my opinion. Um, better than some of the other Tarte matte shadows. So, this is the quad that we're going to use. Um, the blush as well, but I'll go ahead and tell you what shadows they are. So, this one is Private Chateau. Cafe for Creme Brulee, which is my favorite, Tea for Two, Marvel at the Mona Lisa, and then the blush is Irresistible. And the blush in Irresistible is pretty, like it's a pretty blush, but it's kind of so kind of similar to a lot of um, permanent tarp products, so a couple of their other blushes they have, it's similar. So that is not something you need to have, but um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm actually going to take Cafe for Creme Brulee and kind of put it in my crease but I'm going to actually work it like around my crease too because I'm going to do kind of the halo effect. So I'm going to have the crease be Cafe for Creme Brulee. Um, Marvel at the Mona Lisa is going to be like on the inner corner and the outer corner and then T for Two is going to be kind of the middle lid color since it does have a little bit of shimmer to it. So this is going in the crease but it's also kind of going like all in the crease because it's going on the inner part of my eye too. I'm going to try to stay in frame for this but I'm not going to lie it's really hard for me too when I'm doing shadows. Um, and then like since these are my get ready with me's we can chit chat too. Um, so I bought the Naked Smoky palette. I think I told you guys I was not really sure how I felt about it and if I wanted to but I did kind of have a change of heart and was like well like swatching the colors and stuff I'm like some of these are just so good that I feel like I need this palette um dirty sweet was that way like I swatched it and I looked at my boyfriend and I was like oh my god I was like I have never felt a shadow that has been like this buttery and smooth and so good and like that's the thing is I've I've been in like this mood the last like month or two where I'm just completely over urban like I don't know why I'm just kind of over the naked thing which I think a lot of people are I feel like the products they're coming out with I'm just not excited about like I'm not excited about the matte lipsticks because to me just from what I've kind of seen they don't look like they're actually that matte um, they're coming out with some brow products I don't know they're just not coming out with anything to me that is exciting and seeing as fall is kind of rolling around they might be releasing another Vice palette. I have no idea. Um, I haven't actually heard anything, but they typically do that, it seems like, kind of in the fall. So I'm excited to see if they do that, but I feel like, feel like with the release of the Naked Smoky, they're probably not going to do another palette for a little while. Um, but I'm just, I haven't really been too excited about anything that they're coming out with besides the Smoky palette. So, I don't know. And then I was, like, looking at all their single shadows the other day, like, just kind of browsing around, and I realized, like, a lot of the single shadows are just, I don't know, maybe it's just the ones I was looking at, but I felt like they were basically all neutrals. Um, and I'm like, this is, like, Urban Decay. Like, this is the company that should be the most colorful and, like, stand out the most, and it just kind of wasn't anymore. Like, I just walked over there and I felt like the only thing I saw that was color was, like, the electric palette. So, I don't know. I just, I've been kind of over urban lately. Like, I don't know what it is about them. I'm just not, just not enjoying their products as much. I don't know. So, now I'm going to do Marvel for the Mona Lisa on the inner corner and the outer corner. Um, by the way, I use the Sigma E40 brush for my crease. This one, it's an old Sigma brush, it's like the travel size one, but they have this brush like in the full size all the time. It's just the typical like shader brush, it's nothing super special. But I'm just going to take a very little bit because like I said, these matte shadows are actually really pigmented and good. So, um, One palette though that I would like Urban to do 
would be a Naked 3 Basics because I love the rosy like pink colors of my Naked 3 but I do want like more matte shadows so I want them to do that with the Naked 3 because they did it for Naked 1 and Naked 2 but they didn't really do it for Naked 3 and I don't know if they're just like well we already put a couple matte shadows in the original Naked 3 like what are we gonna put in this one like they don't know what to put but I don't know I think it wouldn't be too hard to come up with something like I can already think of like a couple colors I would want in there so I don't know uh, the other thing I was like considering buying but I'm kind of on the fence about is their double ended um eyeliners for each of the smoky palettes because some of those colors that's the only way you'll get to use them is if you buy the double ended eyeliner um, I think like the one that goes with the original Naked palette in like Whiskey and Zero, like those, I think they both sell those separately. But um, the Naked 3 has Blackheart in a pencil form, which is one of my favorite colors. Like that one's just so pretty, but I, I barely use it when I actually use the palette because it's, it's black and I don't use black shadow a ton. But yeah, I kind of want to buy those, but that's... I mean, I just walk over to Urban and I'm just like, there's nothing exciting here anymore, which is kind of sad. Because like I said, I just feel like Urban used to be so colorful and I agree the Naked Trend was a really big thing and it's great, but I just, I don't know, I'm just not excited by their brand anymore. So that's just kind of how I feel about them right now. I regretted buying the Naked palette, this Naked Smoky palette for a little while because I was kind of like... Oh, I don't know like it's it's got a lot of grays in it and I'm already having trouble finishing up gunmetal from my um, original naked palette but I kind of swatched them and I'm like I don't know like they're not I like them better than gunmetal so then I figured I could you know make it work like I would eventually grow to like them so that's kind of where I'm at with that I'm like I debated for a very long time and then I was like, alright, I'll buy it because they're a little bit better in my opinion. So I bought those and I was iffy too because it has gold colors in it and I'm like, you know, I have enough golds and bronzy colors from other palettes and there was one repeat, Radar was in there and Radar in the Naked Smoky palette is very different than the Vice palette that I have it in. So. I don't know what changed there, but it's it's different. The one in my Vice palette is almost more pigmented, and I think it's a little darker too. So, um, so I have that applied now. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that Marvel at the Mona Lisa with this little Smashbox brush. It's just like a pointed crease brush. Um, I believe Makeup Geek has something similar. Sigma might too at this point, but I haven't really checked out Sigma very much lately either. They're another company that I just kind of, I don't know, not inspired by them anymore, I guess. I don't know. Everybody, I feel like, is getting into Morphe, and that's that's fine, too, but I don't know. When it comes to makeup brushes, I'm just buying whatever works, not necessarily by a brand. So that's kind of the mood I've been in lately with makeup brushes, too, is I'm just like, no companies are really coming out with brushes that I love and adore, so I'm just buying ones here and there from companies that I like. Um, like the cosmetic brushes from Ulta, those are pretty good, but I don't like all of their brushes. I like some of them, but like I think I was looking at the eyeshadow brushes and I just really wasn't a fan of them because they're not... They're really fluffy, which is great, but they're not very dense like this. Like, I feel like I need the dense brush to like, pack on shadow, and theirs were kind of fluffy, and I was like that's great to get like a sheer wash of color but that's not really what I want like I don't know I want something that's gonna pack on color I'm kind of blending a little bit right now too with this brush I'm trying to take a very small amount of shadow because I don't want it to get too dark too fast um, but yeah I don't know Sigma hasn't really done anything in a while that's interested me. Urban hasn't really done anything. Uh, Bare Minerals never does anything that interests me, except for the Complexion Rescue. That was the last launch they had that I was actually kind of interested in. And at first I really wasn't, but I was like, well, I've been looking for a great um, tinted moisturizer that I can put on and just feel like it's very natural. 
Um, and I love my Tarte BB Tinted Treatment Primer. I wear this as my foundation quite frequently. Um, but when it gets hot out, I just feel like I can kind of see it breaking up. Especially when I use like powder and stuff. And it's not the best like BB cream. Like, I don't know, I want to put have something on I feel like I can go, I can go swimming with. Um, and I don't have to worry about it, like, washing off and looking unnatural and stuff. And the Tarte one, like, that's kind of how I feel about it. Like, if it washes off, it's going to look kind of unnatural because it's, it just starts to kind of break up on my skin and look weird. So, next I'm back to this little shadow shader brush. Um, and I'm taking my Smashbox Primer Water and I'm going to spray it. If I can find where the spray, there it is. Uh, I don't know, I have a weird thing, like, I don't really like spray spraying this, the primer water. I feel like I'm wasting it. So I'm going to go ahead and dip into that T for two, the more shimmery color. I'm going to put that on the center of the lid. But yeah, that's just kind of how I felt about makeup lately is like I'm not finding companies that are really inspiring me or making me want to buy stuff. Um, NYX is always pretty good, I would say. But they're kind of, I don't know, even lately, I'm like, what else can they really come out with? They have so much stuff. But I don't know if you guys can tell, but that actually created kind of, it's really cool because it's very, very dark on the inner and outer corner and then the lid is just a little bit lighter. So it's kind of a little bit of a definition thing, but it's really pretty. Um, I I'll just kind of feel like what else can NYX do? Like... What else can Urban do? They've kind of, you know, found their niche with things and they pretty much have every product they could want to release. Um, I'm almost waiting for Urban to come out with like a naked contouring palette because I feel like that's going to happen at some point. I'm really surprised to be honest that they haven't already done it because everybody has been doing contouring palettes and the Lorac one launched really recently. And I, when it was launching, I was just like, really? Like, we're going to launch a contouring palette. And I'm just, I'm over contouring. So it was kind of one of those things where I'm just like, I don't care. I'm over this. Um, but everybody kept talking about how good it was. And I couldn't believe how many we actually sold. Like, we sold quite a few in the first couple days that it launched. So I was actually really surprised. But I don't know. I thought contouring was kind of not over, but people are just more, I don't know not doing it as much like they're just kind of more into natural natural contouring and that kind of thing um so I'm just taking like a pencil brush now and marvel at the Mona Lisa the matte one and I'm kind of doing the same thing on the lower lash line that I did on my lid I'm going to do this on the outer corner a little bit on the inner corner and then I'm going to do uh t for two on the inner or kind of middle part of it my lower lash line so, yeah, I just thought contouring was kind of over. I didn't really think anybody, like, I thought people still obviously did it, but they were trying to get a more natural looking contour rather than, you know, something really dark and intense. But we sold quite a bit, and I was a little bit surprised. So, that was actually kind of interesting, but I just thought Urban would, you know, like, they just seemed like they tried to really jump on with trends and stuff so I thought they were gonna do their own contouring palette and that'd be kind of interesting to see. The only thing is I just feel like Urban does a lot of shimmery products so if they did a contouring palette I'm kind of afraid that their like contouring shades would be shimmery. Which for highlights isn't too bad if you have like one or two shimmery shades but your contours you do kind of want those on the matte side. So but been really wanting to buy a lot more ColourPop stuff. Um, I've also been really into liquid lipsticks lately too. So I keep wanting to buy the Anastasia ones, but I feel like every time Anastasia has a shade that I want, they sell out and it's like hard to get. And I'm like, it's just to me not worth the trouble. And I've heard very mixed reviews about the Anastasia ones. I've heard they're really good and I've heard that they're really... I don't know. I don't want to say not good, but like people will be like, oh, they dry and I have like a line right here on the inner part of my lip and they're just super drying and chalky and I'm just like, okay, I don't know what to get then. 
Um, the ColourPop ones I really wanted to get too, but then I kind of saw Tim Talia was talking about how there's kind of a packaging flaw with hers and how, you know, she'll twist the cap on and product will ooze out of the cap. And I'm like, oh my god, like that would totally happen to me. I would buy like two and it would happen to the two that I got or something like that. So I kind of held off on those two. And again, same thing, just so hard to get your hands on. And I'm like, this just isn't worth it to me. Like, I don't know, I, that's one thing I will give Urban a little bit, is when they have a launch like the Naked Smoky, they will make sure that they have, you know, tons of palettes and they are prepared. Because I know the Naked Smoky sold out online on their website, and then I think like 24 hours later they had it restocked and they were ready to go. So, at least when it comes to big launches, they're always kind of prepared. Um... But the problem is, like, they have trouble with keeping up with their production besides that. Because my store has been out of the lipstick colored liar for, like, six months, maybe. Maybe even more, I'm kind of thinking. But, like, they have production issues with, like, some of their other products. And I'm not really sure why that is. So, they're good when they do launches. But, like, keeping up with production sometimes can be a little slow. So... There's that. But everybody's been kind of going crazy over Liar, at least where I'm from. Like, everybody's been asking about it, and I'm like, yeah, we don't, we've been out for a really long time. So I don't know if everybody's just really into that kind of nude pink color, because I think it's kind of a pinky brown color, if I remember correctly. So eyeshadows are pretty much done. I am going to take my shadow brush again and just make sure you really wipe it off um, and I'm going to take the matte like light color in here I don't remember what the name of this one is though uh, private chateau is the light color so that I'm going to take on my little shader brush I am going to pop just a little little bit on that corner I just don't want it to be a super extreme highlight but I want it to be there you can kind of see it. Um, but now I forgot what I was talking about. Oh well. Alright, so that's applied. I'm going to do it on the brow bone as well, but I am going to switch brushes for that. Um, I don't know. I guess kind of one other thing I wanted to talk about is I'm trying to get better at my makeup skills in general. And I just like here's kind of the thing is I don't get a lot of training in my position in makeup um, because my position is more task oriented so I don't get a lot of makeup training but I definitely want to get better at it like I don't think I'm bad at makeup like I see some people and I'm like oh like it just <laughs> you know you just kind of can't comprehend what you're seeing um and it's not people that come into Ulta or, you know, it's just, like, people, like, you see, like, internet pictures and stuff that are really bad. Um, I remember one time on my phone, this, like, gallery, it was, like, 24 of the worst makeup pictures. And it was, like, some of them were, like, mug shots and stuff, like, you know, crazy eyebrows and that kind of thing. But, um, I don't know, I just want to get better at makeup. And, like I said, I don't think I'm bad at makeup, but I just want to get better. Like, I always want to improve my skills. And I feel like there are some companies that are better about making sure their employees are getting more skills. And like I said, with my position, I'm just not really, um, like, I'm just very task-oriented in my position. So I don't really have to do makeup and stuff as much. I don't know. It's just really hard because I'm like, how can I improve but not change my actual job? So if you guys have any tips as to, like, how you improve your makeup skills, just kind of let me know. Um, I mean, of course, watching YouTube always helps you learn, like, little new techniques and stuff, which is, I think, kind of why I like Jaclyn Hill so much, because she, you know, will be like, oh, I'm doing this because it's going to open up the eye, or I'm doing this because it's going to enhance the lash line. Like, she explains why she's doing stuff, and there's a couple other YouTubers that I love and adore for that very same reason, because they explain things so, so well, and it explains why you're doing what you're doing. But, yeah, I just want to get better, and I want to feel like I could be one of those people that's like, yeah, you're doing this because of this. And, like, 
I just want to have a better understanding. So if there's anything that you guys do or know of that kind of helps you get better at your makeup skills, let me know. Um, of course, there's always like, I've seen like Candy Johnson before has held like makeup seminars and stuff, but the nearest one for me would be Chicago and that's still like a two and a half, three hour drive for me. So I could do it, but it'd be a lot of money for me to do this because then I would have to pay for the makeup seminar, pay for a hotel to stay the night in Chicago, that kind of thing. Like it just would be kind of a lot. So I'm just now kind of debating what eyeliner I want to do. Um, I think I'm just going to do perversion. It's kind of what I had in my hand. Um, I do have like another dark brown, but I'm afraid that the dark brown is going to be the same color as the eyeshadow. So yeah, I don't want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and apply perversion probably just along my lash line. You could easily do a winged liner with this and it would look really pretty and I would love to do that, but I don't have the patience for it today. Um, I've just been working way too much and I don't have the patience for winged liner anymore pretty much. Like I never feel like doing winged liner and it makes me really sad because it's such a pretty look and I do it for like nights out and stuff quite frequently like if you know there's something special going on I'll do winged liner pretty frequently but like day-to-day -day basis and stuff I just don't have the patience for it and it sucks because I really like it but that and I'm kind of on the hunt for like a new gel liner I have the essence one and mine is pretty dried up so I think I'm gonna try the Maybelline one or the L'Oreal one I've heard those two are both really really good um, Jaclyn Hill obviously uses the Maybelline one, but I did watch a couple videos and people were like, did like a top five gel eyeliners and the L'Oreal has been on quite a few of them. So kind of considering trying that. So I'm staying really kind of close to the lash line with my liner. I don't know. I just... Whenever I do smoky eyes, I feel like that's kind of what I do if I don't do a winged liner, is I stay kind of close to the lash line just because I want the liner to more just enhance what lashes I have. Because, again, I'm not a big false eyelash person. I don't have the patience for it most of the time. I love false eyelashes, and I love the way they look. Um, but because I don't wear them very often, I'm not used to how they feel. So I think they're really uncomfortable. And I kind of need to try to find some, I think, with like a little bit thinner band. Because the ones that I have are just Ardell's. Like, I haven't bought any expensive ones because I rarely wear them. So I don't really see the point in wearing or buying like ones for like $30, even though I've, I've thought about it. But at the same time, they're false eyelashes. So it's really hard for me to want to spend $30 on them. Alright, so the lower waterline... Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do perversion on that too. I was going to do brown, but I'm not going to. I'm not tugging very hard, by the way. I'm just kind of slightly pulling just a little bit. feels like I'm barely touching my skin. It's just really, really light. I always admire those people that could just do it with one hand and not have to kind of slightly pull down on theirs, but I don't know, just with my contacts and stuff, like my eyes are too, I don't know, like I just, I don't like things going near my eyes, like it just really freaks me out. Um, if you've ever seen the episode of Friends where Rachel has to have like the eye drops put in, I think she had like a cut on her eye or something, I don't remember what it was exactly because it's been a really long time. But they like literally have to sit on her to put the eye drops in. Like that's pretty much me anytime I have to put eye drops in. Like somebody has to sit on me and I have to like, I don't know, try to make myself just lay there and relax and I can't most of the time. But yeah, I just don't like when I have stuff going near my eye. So, eyeliner's done. Oh, it's pretty smoky. Um... For some reason I kind of feel like it looks like something Ashley Benson would wear from Pretty Little Liars. It's kind of what it's making me think of right now. Um, which there is a look I actually want to do that kind of does involve her. There was this really pretty like red brown 
almost bronzy tutorial that somebody had posted. I think it was her actual makeup artist that had posted the tutorial. I'm going to use the Falsies mascara today. Actually, I'm going to do concealer first just because if I don't, it'll drive me nuts. Um, I'm going to try the Maybelline Dream Lumi one. Did this the other day and I wasn't super happy with it. Like, it's good, but it's not like I love my naked skin concealer. Um, I think her actual makeup artist, though, had posted the tutorial. And I found out, like, one of the shadows she used. And it was... Um, Roach? I think it was Roach from Urban. So I got the shadow and I kind of recreated the look. And I actually did this like last summer. And I really, really liked it. So I kind of wanted to do like a get ready with me. Or, I mean, I'd love to do a tutorial with it, but I just don't have the setup for that right now. So I don't know. It might just be another get ready with me type of thing that I do, but we'll see. It was just really pretty and I was like, wow, this is like the perfect smoky eye for like summertime. Like it's kind of been my go-to for the last year or two that I've had it. So yeah. All right. And then I'm just blending that out with my Sigma F64 brush. Mine's kind of gross. I'm sorry. But I just use this for concealer quite frequently. And then like when I wash it, it just feels like it doesn't, I don't know. It just doesn't work as good. Like, it just absorbs too much product. So, there's that. I always do the little triangle method, too, when I do my concealer because I have really big pores in this, like, right here on my cheeks. And for some reason, when I put my concealer on, I feel like my concealer kind of helps, um, kind of, I don't know, make it look a little bit more poreless and perfect. So, yeah, it's typically why I do my concealer like that. Otherwise, I'd probably just do a really small V just to kind of brighten up a little bit, but yeah. And then I kind of blend it around my nose too because I get a lot of redness in there. So concealer is done. I'm going to set that before I do mascara. I'm just going to take my Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Powder. Um, I kind of fell out of love with my NYX Radiant Finishing Powder for my under eyes. So I was thinking about buying the Laura Mercier um, Secret Brightening Powder, but I have heard a couple people say that they just were like, it didn't do anything. Like, it's just like a normal setting powder for me, so why would I spend the extra money on this? So I don't know. I'm going to do kind of some more research on it because I've seen so many people rave about it and talk about it before I actually buy it. Um, if you guys own it, let me know, or you have a favorite under eye setting powder, of course, let me know. But, yeah, the Maybelline one works okay, it's just not very brightening, so, yeah, um, I'm trying to think, now what do I want to do? Mascara. Now I'm going to do Maybelline Falsies. I bought the Maybelline Lash Sensational too that I bought because, um, you'll see in my empties for July. I ended up throwing away my CoverGirl Flamed Out Mascara because I love that mascara. Like, it's really nice. It's got a very similar shaped wand to the Too Faced Better Than Sex, which I do have and have yet to use. Um, but the wands are very similar, and I felt like the formulas were probably kind of similar just from what I've kind of seen and played with at work. Cause I have the Too Faced Better Than Sex, but I haven't used it. So I've kind of played with the tester for it at work, but um, they just seemed like they were really similar and... I don't know. The CoverGirl Flamed Out one, the waterproof version, was um, on clearance. So I picked a couple up, and it's not waterproof. It does not stay on. Um, I came, I went swimming for about an hour, and then I was like, it was just really bright out. So I was like, I really need my sunglasses. I'm going to run home and get them, because the pool is like five minutes away. Like, it's a very short drive, very kind of medium length walk if you wanted to walk you could but it's a very short drive so it's like I'm just gonna run home and get my um sunglasses quick and when I got home I was like I'm gonna go to the bathroom on here too and I went in the bathroom and I looked in the mirror just to kind of see how my makeup was holding up because I was trying a different BB cream that day which I will also talk about my empties and I am probably going to repurchase because I love it so much um but I was just kind of looking at it, and my lower lash line, my mascara, was completely gone.
but it was like I didn't have any other make eye makeup on besides mascara except for I think I had like one eyeshadow and it was like skin colored um but anyways I looked under here and it was like all gray like my lash line was all gray but the mascara was gone so the mascara had just like washed off onto my lower lash line and it was just not good so I threw it away <laughs> and when I was shopping I was like well I should pick up another waterproof mascara because when we go swimming that's like kind of the one makeup thing that I really want is just mascara so I picked up the lash sensational and I picked it up in waterproof because I was reading through the reviews and people are like oh it's really hard to get off and I'm like well that's good then because then it means it'll actually stay on when you go swimming there were like one or two people that were like oh not waterproof enough or whatever and I was like okay but there was one mascara I was gonna buy oh I was gonna buy the covergirl clump crusher because I was like oh that sounds like a good like natural mascara for when we go swimming and when I looked at it people were like not waterproof and I'm like oh <laughs> that's not what I want. I'm like, why would I buy another CoverGirl mascara that isn't waterproof? So, I didn't buy that one. I bought the Lash Sensational, and I'm excited to try it because it does have a similar one to the um, Benefit Roller Lash, which I tried in Chicago, and I, uh, I don't know if I like it or not, but then again, mine was like a fresh, like brand new open tube, so... I used it and I just kind of haven't used it since we've gotten back just hoping it'll dry out just a little bit again before I use it because it just seemed a little too wet when I used it in Chicago so but now I'm trying excited to try the lash sensational the falsies mascara is pretty good too um, but it's just it's nothing spectacular I've kind of been on the hunt for like my perfect mascara. Um, me and my mom both have and we actually really both like the Benefit Bad Gal Lash and she really likes the Benefit Roller Lash. I gave her a sample of that and she actually tried it out before I did. So she's told me she really liked that one. Um, there was like one more that we really liked too. The falsies one, like I said, it's just good, but it's just not dramatic enough for me. Like, it is pretty natural looking. It's decent volume, but I don't think it adds enough length. Like, that's, I think, what I'm looking for. I always think I'm looking for volume, but if my lashes are short and, you know, fat, like, that doesn't look good. I'd rather have them be long and skinny, I think, than these, like, short, fat, stubby lashes. So I think I need to focus more on like lengthening mascaras than volumizing ones, but so I'm taking my Too Faced Endless Summer Bronzer. This is almost gone. Um, I'm just kind of working on it a little bit, but go ahead and wear this. So I'm just going to do a little bit along the hairline. And I guess when I bronze, I kind of do like contouring a little bit, but to me, this is like what works best for me. I don't like to do the big fluffy brush with the E3 thing like that's it's really pretty and it's great for some people but on me I just feel like it looks kind of it can just look kind of dirty so I kind of end up contouring a little bit I guess when I do my bronzer but the only thing is I don't try to keep it very precise like I will kind of on my cheeks spread it out a little bit and then I'll kind of blend along my hairline here too just to make sure that this doesn't look too And unblended and uh, it might kind of go along my jawline a little bit but I really kind of don't do that a lot so there's that I'm really excited though because we are getting kind of to the point where makeup companies are going to well a lot of makeup companies have really already kind of started to do their fall makeup launches like I'm thinking the Smoky Palette was kind of one of Urban's fall launches along with their brow products and their matte lipsticks. So I'm excited because we're getting to the point where companies are going to start doing their fall um, makeup releases and I'm kind of excited to see what comes out. Um, every season there's always something new but 
I don't know. This year I'm telling myself I cannot buy any more of these Tarte Holiday sets because I love them but I rarely use them. So I kind of need to quit buying them. It's bronzer. I'm sorry. It doesn't usually take me this long to bronze up my face but it's taking me a little while because this bronzer is so far gone that I like, I don't know, it's really hard for me to get product. Like a lot of the edges are just gone. Like they're pretty much gone. So I don't know. It's really hard to use. I really think I'm going to buy the Too Faced bronzer again, but I have a Tarte one that I kind of need to like use up. So I don't want to say I'm going to buy the Too Faced one because if I use up the Tarte one then I might decide I like that one better. But this Too Faced one is definitely seen better days. So, eh, not too bad. This side over here. No, this side over here looks a little low. I don't know why it looks like that. Mm. Kind of try to bring it up a little bit. So I'm going to leave that out and I'm actually going to grab a really big fluffy brush. This is the Sigma Large Powder F30. The one I used for bronzing, this is the Japanese brush. It's like the 150 angle contour brush. But I love this one because it's like a fluffy brush. Um, but it's kind of comes to a point a little bit. So I love this one. It's one of my favorite like bronzing kind. It's just a, like an all purpose brush because I can actually use it even to like this side. I can actually use this to like set my under eyes. Um, I can use the tip of it to highlight. I can use it for contouring and bronzing and stuff. So this is like one of my favorite brushes ever. Um, but I don't know if Japanese makes it anymore because I think when I bought it, it was on clearance. So I don't know if Japanese makes it anymore, but even if they made something similar, it's a really great brush. So I'm taking this large powder F30 and I'm just kind of dusting bronzer onto my neck because this is kind of always something I do when I do wear bronzer. I'll dust a little bit on my neck and just really blend it out because I don't know, it just helps with the like summer glow and helps me use up the product a little faster too. So it's something I do pretty frequently, especially if I wear it. So there's that. Now I'm going to go in with blush finally. Didn't think we were going to get there. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just being sarcastic now. Um, so this Tarte Quad, going back to this, the blush was irresistible. And I'm just using a Sigma blush brush, nothing special. Mine is like stained pink. But just going to take a little bit of that and hopefully don't go overboard because I always do. And the Tarte blushes are always so much more pigmented than I expect them to be, so that doesn't help. <laughs> I've been trying to get better with my blush application in particular because I feel like I always go way too heavy handed and that's not something I want to keep doing. Especially because I want to wear more bold blush colors and it's really hard to wear them when you're very heavy handed with blush. So I bought a bunch of the NYX baked blushes because they are more sheer and then I don't go as heavy handed and it's kind of helped me get a little bit better about when I use other blushes to be a little bit lighter handed. Mm -hmm. So, that side I think I got a little heavy handed with. Mm, not too bad. Alright. So, I'm a weird person and I do my setting powder last. I do like a light layer after I do my foundation, which I never did tell you guys my foundation. Um, I have the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte on. Hmm, it looks nice. I don't know yet. Uh, this is like the second day I've worn it because I remember I told you guys that I was kind of thinking like I really need to clean out my face products. So I was going to get rid of a foundation and I, I don't know. This one I really like it but I don't know if it's worth keeping yet. I forgot highlighter though. So I'm not doing my powder yet. I'm actually going to do highlighter first. What should we use for a highlighter? <sighs> Let's use Jaclyn Hill. <laughs> um... I've seen a lot of people debate about this highlighter off and on because Jacqueline kind of says some things in her video about it. Um, like she created it and then kind of saw it like on her sister who's a little bit fair and she's like, oh, it looks great on her. So like it will look good on other skin tones, you know, not just Jacqueline Hill's skin tone, which is 
like perfect and perfect by the way um so I don't know I bought it and I like when I was buying it I'm like I don't feel like this is gonna work but I'm going to buy it and see and if I don't like it I'll return it or I will keep it and use it on you know clients and stuff because I actually do quite a bit of makeup like around prom season there are a couple people I do their makeup for it so that's what it looks like I just thought it looked like too deep to be anything that I would want to wear um, but the thing is like I literally just very lightly tap my brush in and it's enough product and this is just a little Smashbox fan brush. And I just apply it and I'm just in love. Because it's so dewy and so pretty. Like it just makes me look really dewy. I should say it's not actually dewy, it's powder. But you can already see the difference. Like highlight, no highlight, highlight, no highlight. <laughs> So I actually really like it. Um, I did see a couple people though that were like, oh, it really kind of enhances my pores and stuff. And I have had that happen, but I found that I was applying way too much. I was getting a little overexcited and I applied a lot the first couple times I wore it. So um, I think that's what some of it is. If you don't blend it out quite good enough or if you apply a little too much, it does get a little... I don't know. Like, I have a hard time with highlighters as it is, just because with big pores, it really does make them stand out. But my big pores are mostly on my cheeks. So, if I'm applying this at the tops of my cheekbones, it's not too bad. It's just like when it gets kind of in here a little bit that I have a little more trouble with it. My highlight down my nose is like not really. I can see it on camera, but in person, I can barely see it. But I really like this. I've actually never bought any of the Becca highlights besides the liquid version. And I'm kind of considering buying more of them because I love how intense this is. Um, I kept my box just because I really like it. Uh, I was going to keep my Morphe palette, like Jaclyn Hill palette box too. And I have no idea where that disappeared to. So I don't think I can keep the box anymore because I have no idea what happened to it. Oh, but anyways, back to the highlighters. Um, I just like how intense they are. They seem like they're really nice, so I kind of want to buy more of them. Um, I saw that Sephora has like a poured version, which is kind of like a cream, and I'm really interested in trying that too, just because it's, I don't know, it just seems like it's really pretty. I kind of swatch them in stores. But I've been on a really big Sephora kick lately. Like, it's been really bad. I've placed a lot of Sephora orders lately, and they're almost like $50 every single time, because... For some reason, once I hit the $50 in free shipping, I'm like, okay, like, you know, I don't need anything else. And then I end up buying more, and I'm just like, this is really ridiculous. Like, I should just do one big transaction instead of doing all these little ones. But I keep spending money at Sephora, and I don't typically do that, and I kind of need to stop. But it's just hard, because when you work at a company, you get used to the brands you have and stuff, and you buy a lot of the products that you really like, of course, but then, like... When nothing new is coming out and there's just nothing really catching your eye, then you kind of start looking at other companies and seeing what they have. And um, that's kind of where I'm at. Like, I'm like, uh, I know what we have and I've pretty much bought everything that I want. <laughs> Not everything, but I've bought quite a bit of stuff from work that I don't really want to keep buying more of that stuff. So... So that's why I do my setting powder last. It does cover up my highlight just a little bit, but I feel like it makes everything look so much more blended and kind of cohesive. So I do my setting powder last kind of for that reason. I know it's kind of weird and I know it's, you know, I understand putting, like when I put my blush on, I could be like wiping my foundation away because I didn't really like set set my foundation. But like I said, I just do a light, light, light layer of powder after my foundation, but then I do more setting powder later. So, and it never looks too powdery on me, which I like because it's my Maybelline Fit Me, and I think like that powder is just really great. Um, it's a little fair though because I have the translucent shade, and I'm kind of thinking about buying another shade just for summer times. So I can look a little more bronze, but I'm on to lips now. That is the last step. I'm Okay. 
I'm not even doing a lip liner just because we're staying home. No one's going to see me like this, so. <laughs> that is the look, though. Um, oh, it feels good to take my hair down, even though it is, like, two-day-old hair. I curled it a couple days ago, and this is just what's left of it. My hair is just holding on to a little bit of curl left. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I tried to kind of chit-chat a little bit. It's a little hard sometimes because... When you're having a conversation but there's no one actually like talking to you it's a little tricky so I'm not used to that yet um, but I'm sure these will get better as I get used to them but yeah like I said you know there's a couple things I said you know if you have a suggestion or anything like that just let me know um, for makeup improving skills um, under eye setting powders that kind of stuff let me know about those and I do plan to do more of these with these little tart quads um, I know there's two more in the 2014 set, and then I have another four in the 2013 set. So I plan on doing more of those soon. Some of them are a little darker and smokier even still, so those I might wait just a little while longer because it'll be a little closer to fall and it'll be a little more appropriate. But yeah, this is the finished look, and I hope you guys like it and you are having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.